Hey everyone, uh, this is Anne at Playcrafts, um, and I thought I would do a um, kind of a video tutorial live feed of uh, making a quilt design a day or a QDAD um, and kind of talk about my design process as I'm making it. Um, I haven't really done this before, so hopefully it goes okay. All right, so the first thing to do. Um, in QDAD, we use design seeds for our images uh, and our palettes. So, and she puts up two every day, so you can kind of scroll through here. She really likes flowers. Ooh, that's actually a really pretty palette, though. Um, I might use that actually. But here are the ones for today. Uh, we've got a beach with some blues and greens and some browns, and then ooh, some flowers. I like. This, I just, I'm really, I'm really not digging that green. Um, yeah, really not feeling the green. So, I think, I think we're gonna use this one. All right, so I'm gonna copy the image and bring up Illustrator. So I use Illustrator for designing. Um, there are many tools out there, but this is my preferred tool. I'm gonna make a new file and I set my width and height to be the actual width and height that I would want a finished quilt to be. So in this case, uh, 60 by 70 inches. Um, it's a little arbitrary, uh, but I use that a lot. Actually, I'm gonna make it 72 inches um, just because that way they're both divisible by 12, um, which is a pretty standard size. Okay, so here's my Here's my new file, this is my canvas, this is what I'll draw in. Uh, but the first thing to do is copy my image that I got from Design Seeds. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here. I like to keep it off the canvas. This is, this is where I put my quilt stuff, uh, my quilt design. Okay, so I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, which is over here. Um, ever since I reinstalled my OS, the tooltips are all kinds of messed up um, or upgraded my OS. Anyway, so eyedropper, what it does is whatever you click on it will take that color. So here we go, first color. And I do have this uh, keyboard uh, shortcut for saving out my swatches um, into my swatch tab here, which I use a lot, just because I do this every day. And the other way you normally do it is when you select your new color, you come over here, you click this box, and you drag it all the way over here. And I have a touchpad. Um, I don't actually <laughs> use a mouse, I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, because I'm on a laptop. Anyway, it's just a lot faster for me to just do the keyboard command. But just so you know, if you don't have the keyboard command set up, you just drag and drop. Okay, so now I have my six colors over here, and I'm actually going to put them in their own color group. So I select this little folder here, uh, which makes the new color group. And if there's time, I'll explain why I do that. I don't use it every time, um, but I do use it sometimes. And I'm actually going to quit Slack so it doesn't bong every time somebody sends me a message. Okay. So that's the colors set up. Now what I want to do, um, I need to figure out what shapes I want to work with. And I'm really drawn to the wave um, part of this. So I think I'm gonna do something, <laughs> I'm gonna do something with curves. That's, that's really unusual for me. Um, that's totally not true. Um, I use curves all the time, in case you aren't familiar with my work. Uh, but I am going to once again use curves. So, I think though, I often use just a single block and repeat it, but I kind of want to play with um, the interaction of two different blocks. So I think I'm going to do a quarter ring and a quarter circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my blocks. Now with um, making shapes in Illustrator, I use this shape tool a lot. Uh, so you can, once this rectangle has been selected, you can just drag, just click and drag, and you can make an arbitrary size rectangle. Um, 
and you can resize it all you want. That's the nice thing about Illustrator versus Photoshop. You're not going to get any pixelated wackiness. However, uh, I know exactly what size I want these to be uh, because I have ring and quarter circle templates that are six inches uh, square. So it makes sense to make our, rect make our block six inches. So this is my this is my square. I'm going to actually change it to the default uh, stroke and fill. So fill is the color it's filled with, stroke is the outline. You can't really see it here, but if I drag it on the background, you might be able to kind of see there's a black border, and that's the stroke. I'd like to build my blocks off the canvas and then put them on when I'm actually creating the design itself. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to start with the ring the quarter ring shape. Um, and so what I'm doing is creating a circle to go to cut up my square. Uh, normally I have snap on so it I don't know if you can see that but it kind of snaps to the where the corner and the center meet and it, I have to move my mouse quite a bit to make it actually move it. But if you don't have that on, or if you want to double check, you can select both items by um, dragging a selection box over them. And then if you select the square, you can go. You can use these align tools. They're up here as well, but I use this more often. And what this does, um, because I clicked on the square, it's going to align to. It's setting that as the key object. And so it's going to align to key object instead of the canvas, which is what it defaults to. And so what happens is if I, um, here actually let me drag this off so you can see it actually working. Uh, if I select my square, when I align objects, it's going to move everything to line up with the square. So align left here will align the left side with this, um, the left side of the circle with the left side of the square and align top will line up the, the top. Um, and that just makes sure that they're uh, where I want them to be. And finally, because I'm making a ring, I need to make the center circle. And that's lined up, I'm pretty sure, but just in case, um, this is a line center along the horizontal align center along the vertical. So if this was, oh, they're both selected, that's not going to work. Uh, so if this was um, off here, just to kind of show you it working, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So that's a really weird way to draw things, but the reason why I do that is I use this all the time. This is the Pathfinder, and uh, this is the Divide tool. And what this does is it, um, it splits up the shapes based on what lines intersect. So I just used it. And now I have this shape, and I have this shape, and you see I have this block, which is my quarter ring, which is what I want. And I'm not going to use these, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my quarter circle. It's the same thing, it's um, the same process. And just to, normally I draw them so they're lined up, but just to kind of reiterate this alignment method. Line top. Okay. Oh, and I need to actually divide them up. All right. And again, I don't need this part, so I'll just delete it. All right, so these are my two blocks start adding some color. Um, so here are the colors I chose earlier, uh, or I got earlier. Let's do this green, this blue, maybe this blue. Okay. And one thing I'm going to actually do is I'm going to turn off the, the stroke now because I don't want it in my final design. And um, this icon down here will make it so it's nothing. 
Now one thing you have to, that I always forget to do is if this stroke is uh, in front of the fill, so see how they're swapping places, that means if I choose a color here, it will actually change the stroke or the outline color as opposed to um, changing what's actually in it. And I don't ever want that, so I often forget and then I'm like, why are my colors not changing? And so uh, now you'll see it actually changes the fill. Okay, um, let's play around with this. Like I said, I'm interested in how these shapes kind of act together. Um, let's, let's put them on the canvas. Now, see how there's that little white line? That means they're not right next to each other. When you use the uh, Pathfinder Divide tool, it actually auto groups things, which means if I click anywhere on it, um, oops, I can, it will move the entire thing. Um, if I ungroup, which I just use the keyboard command for, I can now select each thing. And uh, I use grouping and ungrouping a lot, but with alignment, if you group, it treats everything in the group as a single object, which is really helpful. So to get these lined up, I'll once again select this thing, and I'll align the left side. And then there's this thing, this distrib uh, distribute spacing. I have it set to zero inches, which means line them up so there's no space between them. Um, and this will put them top and bottom like they are here. And so there we go, they just snap right together. And so that's an easy way to get things lined up. And I use that a ton when I'm making patterns, especially because I want everything to be um, lined up. Okay, so hmm. let's, let's play with this. Um, so I use copy and paste a lot. So there's copy and paste. So control C or command C on Mac uh, is copy and control or command V is paste. And you see paste just kind of, it puts it in the center of the screen. I use paste in front a lot, which actually puts it, it looks like I didn't do anything, but if I drag this, you'll see that there's two copies. And the reason why I do paste in front is because if you're moving something and you, like, see how I can move it arbitrarily, but if I hold down shift, it makes it so I can only move in straight lines and 45 degree diagonal, which is really helpful. Um, and then I'm gonna rotate, and again, when I hold down shift, it makes it rotate in 45 degree increments, which is really nice. That's a fun shape. It looks kind of like a, like some sort of hazard or something. <laughs> Beware. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna do some more copying and pasting. Um, just kind of play with this a little bit. Let's see. Once again, I'm pasting in front. Um, try to say when I do that, just because you can't see it on the screen. Um, So what I did there is um, I pasted it in front and then command D is transform again. And so the last thing I had done is move, I moved this block, a set of blocks down 12 inches uh, so they would line up directly be below these. And so when I pasted it in front, I just did transform again and it moved those down 12 inches. Um, it's kind of hard to describe in words. If you play around with it, you'll hopefully it will make a little more sense. Okay, so now I really like to um, play with foreground and background in my in my work, so having a background is, is kind of important for that. So I'm going to put in a background. Now you notice I drew that rectangle and it came, it put it on like over everything I had just drawn. Um, in Illustrator, as you add things, it's like adding um, a cut piece of paper on top of, or in this case, a large flat sheet of paper on top of everything you've drawn before. So every new thing gets added to the top. Um, and you can see that over here in your layers tab. So here's the thing I just added. This double circle means it's selected. And you can see all the other things I've drawn 
are here. Um, and group means that they're grouped together. And this is my, my image here. So you can reorder things by dragging and dropping them. Um, or you can just do keyboard commands. And I use send to, bring to front and send to back a lot. Um, in this case, I want the background to be the bottom of the stack. So I want to send it to the back. Um, and what that does is it just puts it down here at the very bottom of my layer. And I want it to be a different color. There we go. So now that it's that color, now we're starting to see how those objects would sit on top of a background. Um, the other thing I like to do, so normally when you select things, you drag a square around it, but or drag a rectangle around it, but it, now when I'm doing that, because there's a background, it thinks I'm clicking and dragging that. And so then you have to, and you'll see me do this because I, I don't always um, do the step where I um, lock what I'm about to show you. Uh, but if you drag, if you start from the outside, you can still drag your selection box. And then if you hold down shift and click the background, it will unselect the background. But far easier <laughs> is if you click here. So if this is my background. There's this little blank square right here, and if I click it, it locks that um, it locks that object. And so now I can't click it, I can't interact with it, move it, I can't change the color or anything. And if I want to unlock, you just click it again, and now I can move it again um, or change the color. But in this case, let's lock it, um, and now I can select these with no problem. Okay. So this is a fun shape, but it doesn't really, it's not the wave shape that I'm looking for. So I'm going to actually delete all this stuff. Um, I did save this over here in case I wanted to play with it again. I have it. But in the meantime, let's play with this shape again. Let's see what we can do. Um, let's make it a little more wave-like. It's weird. Let's see. So one thing I play with a lot is actually reflection. Um, let's turn on preview so you can see what it does. So this is reflecting it around um, a vertical line versus a horizontal line, which will flip it that way. And it took me a long time to figure out kind of or to intuit what these are doing. In the meantime, that's what the preview button's for. Um, so it's an interesting shape. Let's see. Start repeating that. Ooh, kind of like that. Maybe one more. Kind of like jellyfish. Let's let's see what it looks like when. Get a few rows of that going. This is fun. Um, I'm going to change the color of this one. Um, well, actually, yeah, I'm going to make another row first. I like that shape. Okay, so I do want to line it up though. Um, I'm going to group this, all of those together. So I just selected them and used the keyboard shortcut for group, um, command G, it's probably control G if you have a PC. And now I'm going to center them um, vertically, horizontally. See, getting them confused already. Uh, so center them across the horizontal um, section. Vertically would be this way. And the reason why I grouped them, uh, just to show you what happens if you don't, so now they're ungrouped. If I do that, it stacks them all on top of each other because it's treating each block as an independent object and shoving them together. Whereas when I group this, all of these together, it will treat this whole thing as just one object. And so when I align them horizontally, it will align all of it. Okay, so I'm gonna ungroup that because I don't actually want them grouped. Um, regularly. All right, so 
Yeah, this is really fun. I like I like that it's got the the wave shape and um, let's see. Let's start playing with colors. So um, one thing is, oh, just real quick, describe this. So this is the the black arrow is the selection tool. But if I click on something, it will click it will select the entire group. Um, and if you double click, it will open the group. Uh, but there's also this, the direct selection tool, and I switch between them a lot, uh, and I just use the keyboard commands. Uh, I'll try to mention when I'm doing it. But what it does is it will let you select an object inside a group and manipulate it by itself. So that's really helpful for when you're recoloring. So what I'm doing here is um, selecting just this light blue part so I just want to um, color this part. And if you hold down shift, it will, while you're selecting, it will add that to the selection. So if normally if I select different things, it, see how it's not adding it, it's just selecting something different. So I um, probably should have pointed that out before I did all this, but okay. So selecting all these. And I actually spend a lot of time playing with color um, in my designs. Which what does it look like if it's green? It's kind of interesting. Uh, so the other thing I use a lot is Command H, or probably Control H, which see how it hides and unhides those blue lines to show what's selected. They get kind of in the way when you're trying to see like what you're doing. Um, Of course, now you can't see what I'm selecting. There you go. Well, let's make that the background color. I like how these shapes interact with each other by being the same color. Um, it's fun. So just to, like this looks like one shape, but if I change this to a different color, uh, tan, now they don't look like the same shape anymore. So I like the way that it doesn't look like rows because there's um, the colors flow from one row into another. So I kind of I want to play with that a bit more. Um, I kind of want this to be different color. Oh, yeah, let me turn on selection so you can see what I'm selecting. Yeah. I really like uh, playing with, of course now I can't really see what I'm doing, but I really like playing with the background and um, having it flow into the foreground. So for me, I use the background color through out my designs quite a bit. It's fun. <laughs> it looks like they look like upside down jellyfish. What happens if I flip them around? Now they look like right side up jellyfish. I can't decide. Hmm. I think I like the upside down jellyfish because I like this wave shape here. It, it looks, you know, watery. Um, I also like this shape here. I might play with that actually. Let's I need another blue. I need more colors. <laughs> um, no, I just isn't. the brown is fun. It's just I, I'm not really feeling it today. Um, let's see how this looks. Add this here. Kind of like the way this looks. It's like it's coming in and up the center of the design. Now I'm going to just sit here and flip between colors because I can never decide. Okay. 
Hmm. I think I like that better. Yeah, I like how this wraps around. I do sit here and spend way too much time just flipping between colors though. Um, so I don't know, maybe if I do another one of these, it'll be half an hour of me just flipping colors. Okay, um, hopefully not. Yeah, I think this, I like that. Cool, so here we go, there's a design. Um, so I'm just gonna save it out, save for web. And because I made it 60 inches by 70 inches, it will try to save a 60 inch by 70 inch. Um, I have it set to PNG, but there's JPEG or whatever in here, uh, which is obviously way too big. So for web, I usually make it 800 wide. Um, no reason, it's just, it seems an appropriate size. And um, you can see my earlier attempts at making a video here. And okay, there we go. So, and then I'm also going to save the Illustrator file. Okay, and I try to always save my Illustrator files um, just because if I go to make this a pattern, I have so much information already here. Uh, these blocks are six inches. Um, so I know if I, you know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I make eight blocks across in this order, um, and however many down, I will get this design and then I can add, um, I'll just draw in the side border here. And I know if I add this border, which is six inches by 72 inches, I add my seam allowances. So I make a border six and a half by 72 and a half. Then I know, um, and I make one for each side then I will have the right size quilt when I'm done. And I would also make this top piece here. Oh, which is a weird size, mostly because I put these arbitrarily high. So one of the things I do when I make patterns is I will come in and um, fix this up. So make this four inches, again, align it to the bottom. Um, Select all this, plus this, select that. Like I said, I use this alignment thing all the time. Oops, that's what happens when you forget to group. So unselect that, group. Now, let's do that again. There we go. And then make this the correct size. Okay, so now this is 48 by 32 add my seam allowances 48 and a half by 32 and a half and this would be four and a half by 48 and a half with the seam allowances and then I have my six inch blocks um, and there you go that's your pattern um, maybe I'll do another video just showing the process because there's you know of course a little bit more to it than that although my process is not the smoothest um, anyway so there you go there is my cute ad um, I would I'm going to go put it up in the Facebook group, and uh, if you are interested in joining our Facebook group, you can search for QDAD, um, and I'll put the link in the description of the video, and also um, you can come check out my blog at play-crafts.com, uh, you can click the link that I'm going to add to this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and uh, I look forward to hearing more. If you want to see more, let me know. Um, I would definitely do this again. So thanks everybody and I'll see you later.